As for Bilbo Baggins, even while he was making his speech, he had been fingering the golden ring in his pocket, his magic ring that he had kept secret for so many years. As he stepped down, he slipped it on his finger, and he was never seen by any hobbit in Hobbiton again. He walked briskly back to his hole, and stood for a moment listening with a smile to the din in the pavilion and to the sounds of merrymaking in other parts of the field. Then he went in. He took off his party clothes, folded up and wrapped in tissue paper his embroidered silk waistcoat, and put it away. Then he put on quickly some old untidy garments, and fastened round his waist a worn leather belt. <laughs> on it he hung a short sword in a battered black leather scabbard. From a locked drawer, smelling of mothballs, he took out an old cloak and hood. They had been locked up as if they were very precious, but they were so patched and weather-stained that their original color could hardly be guessed. <laughs> It might have been dark green. They were rather too large for him. He then went into his study, and from a large strong box, took out a bundle wrapped in old cloths, and a leather-bound manuscript, and also a large bulky envelope. The book and bundle he stuffed into the top of a heavy bag that was standing there, already nearly full. Into the envelope he slipped his golden ring, and its fine chain, and then sealed it, and addressed it to Frodo. At first he put it on the mantelpiece, but suddenly he removed it and stuck it in his pocket. At that moment the door opened and Gandalf came quickly in. Oh! oh. <laughs> Hello, said Bilbo. I wondered if you would turn up. <sighs> I am glad to find you visible, replied the wizard, sitting down in a chair. I wanted to catch you and have a few final words. I suppose you feel that everything has gone off splendidly and according to plan. Yes, I do, said Bilbo. Though that flash was surprising. <laughs> it quite startled me, let alone the others. A little addition of your own, I suppose. It was. You have wisely kept that ring secret all these years, and it seemed to me necessary to give your guests something else that would seem to explain your sudden vanishment. It would spoil my joke. <laughs> oh, you are an interfering old busybody, <laughs> laughed Bilbo. <laughs> but I... Expect you know best, as usual. I do, when I know anything. But I don't feel too sure about this whole affair. It has now come to the final point. You've had your joke, and alarmed or offended most of your relations, and given the whole Shire something to talk about for nine days, or ninety-nine more likely. Are you going any further? Yes, I am. I feel I need a holiday. A very long holiday, as I have told you before. Probably a permanent holiday. I don't expect I shall return. In fact, I don't mean to, and I have made all arrangements. I am old, Gandalf. I don't look it, but I'm beginning to feel it in my heart of hearts. Well preserved indeed. He snorted. Why, I feel all thin. Sort of stretched, if you know what I mean. Like butter that has been scraped over too much bread. I can't be right. I need a change. Or something. Gandalf looked curiously and closely at him. No, it does not seem right. He said thoughtfully. No, after all, I believe your plan is probably the best. Well, I've made up my mind anyway. <laughs> I want to see mountains again, Gandalf. Mountains! And then find somewhere where I can rest. In peace and quiet. Without a lot of relatives prying around and a string of confounded visitors hanging on the bell. I might find somewhere where I can finish my book. I have thought of a nice ending for it. And he lived happily ever after. To the end of his days. Gandalf laughed. <laughs> I hope he will. But nobody will read the book, however it ends. Oh, they may in years to come. Frodo has read some already, as far as it has gone. You'll keep an eye on Frodo, won't you? Yes, I will. Two eyes, as often as I can spare them. <laughs> he would come with me, of course, if I asked him. In fact, he offered to once, just before the party. But he does not really want to yet. I want to see the wild country again before I die, and the mountains. But he is still in love with the Shire. 
with woods and fields and little rivers. <laughs> he ought to be comfortable here. I am leaving everything to him, of course, except a few oddments. I hope he will be happy when he gets used to being on his own. It's time he was his own master now. Everything, said Gandalf. The ring as well. You agreed to that, you remember? Well, uh, yes, I, I suppose so, stammered Bilbo. Where is it? In an envelope, if you must know, said Bilbo impatiently. There, on the mantelpiece. Well, no. <sighs> Here it is in my pocket, he hesitated. <laughs> Isn't that odd now, he said softly to himself. Yet after all, why not? Why shouldn't it stay there? Gandalf looked again very hard at Bilbo, and there was a gleam in his eyes. I think, Bilbo, he said quietly, I should leave it behind. Don't you want to? Well, yes. Uh, and no. Now it comes to it, I, I don't feel like parting with it at all, I might say. I don't really see why I should. Why do you want me to? He asked, and a curious change came over his voice. It was sharp with suspicion and annoyance. You, you are always battering me about my ring, but you have never bothered me about the other things that I got on my journey. No, but I had to badger you, said Gandalf. I wanted the truth. It was important. Magic rings are, well, magical, and they are rare and curious. I was professionally interested in your ring, you may say, and I still am. I should like to know where it is if you go wandering again. Oh, so I think you have had it quite long enough. You don't need it any more, Bilbo, unless I am quite mistaken. Bilbo flushed, and there was an angry light in his eyes. His kindly face grew hard. Why not? He cried. And what business is it of yours anyway to know what I do with my own things? It is my own. I found it. It came to me. Yes, yes, said Gandalf. There is no need to get angry. If I am angry, it is your fault, said Bilbo. It is mine, I tell you. My own. My precious. Yes, my precious. The wizard's face remained grave and attentive, and only a flicker in his deep eyes showed that he was startled and indeed alarmed. It has been called that before, he said, but not by you. But I say it now, and why not? Even if Gollum said the same once, it's not his now, but mine. I shall keep it, I say. Gandalf stood up. He spoke sternly. You will be a fool if you do, Bilbo, he said. You make that clearer with every word you say. It has got far too much hold on you. Let it go, and then you can go yourself and be free. I'll do as I choose and go as I please, said Bilbo obstinately. Now, oh, now, my dear hobbit, said Gandalf. All your long life we have been friends, and you owe me something. Come, do as you promised. Give it up. Well, if you want my ring yourself, say so, cried Bilbo. But you won't get it. I won't give my precious away, I tell you. His hand strayed to the hilt of his small sword. Gandalf's eyes flashed. It will be my turn to get angry soon, he said. If you say that again, I shall. Then you will see Gandalf the Grey uncloaked. He took a step towards the Hobbit, and he seemed to grow tall and menacing. His shadow filled the little room. Bilbo backed away to the wall, breathing hard, his hand clutching at his pocket. They stood for a while facing one another, and the air of the room tingled. Gandalf's eyes remained bent on the hobbit. Slowly, his hands relaxed, and he began to tremble. I don't know what has come over you, Gandalf, he said. You have never been like this before. What is it all about? It is mine, isn't it? I found it. And Gollum would have killed me if I hadn't kept it. I'm not a thief, whatever he said. I have never called you one, Gandalf answered. And I am not one either. I'm not trying to rob you, but to help you. I wish you would trust me as you use. He turned away and the shadow passed. He seemed to dwindle again into an old grey man, bent and troubled. Bilbo drew his hand over his eyes. I'm sorry, he said. But I felt so queer. And it would be a relief in a way not to be bothered with it anymore. It has been so growing on my mind lately. Sometimes I have felt it was like an eye looking at me. 
and I'm always wanting to put it on and disappear, don't you know? <laughs> Wondering if it is safe and pulling it out to make sure. I, I tried locking it up, but I found I couldn't rest without it in my pocket. I don't know why, and I don't seem able to make up my mind. Then trust mine, said Gandalf. It is quite made up. Go away and leave it behind. Stop possessing it. Give it to Frodo, and I will look after him. Bilbo stood for a moment tense and undecided. Presently he sighed. <sighs> All right, he said with an effort. I will. Then he shrugged his shoulders and smiled rather ruefully. <laughs> After all, that's what this party business was all about, really. To give away lots of birthday presents and somehow make it easier to give it away at the same time. It hasn't made it any easier in the end, but it would be a pity to waste all my preparations. It would quite spoil the joke. Indeed, it would take away the only point I ever saw in the affair, said Gandalf. <laughs> Very well, said Bilbo. He goes to Frodo. With all the rest, he drew a deep breath. And now I really must be starting or someone else will catch me. I have said goodbye and I couldn't bear to do it all over again. He picked up his bag and moved to the door. You have still got the ring in your pocket, said the wizard. Oh, well, so I have, cried Bilbo. And with my will and all the other documents, too. Oh, you, you had better take it and deliver it for me. That will be safest. No, don't give the ring to me, said Gandalf. Put it on the mantelpiece. It'll be safe enough there till Frodo comes. I shall wait for him. Bilbo took out the envelope, but just as he was about to set it by the clock, his hand jerked back, and the packet fell on the floor. Before he could pick it up, the wizard stooped and seized it and set it in its place. A spasm of anger passed swiftly over the hobbit's face again. Suddenly it gave way to a look of relief and a laugh. <laughs> well, that's that, he said. Now, I'm off. They went out into the hall. Bilbo chose his favorite stick from the stand, and then he whistled. Three dwarves came out of different rooms where they had been busy. Is everything ready? asked Bilbo. Everything packed and labeled? Everything, everything they answered. <laughs> well, let's start then. He stepped out of the front door. It was a fine night, and the black sky was dotted with stars. He looked up, sniffing the air. What fun! What fun to be off again, off on the road with dwarves! This is what I've really been longing for, for years! <sighs> Goodbye, he said, looking at his old home and bowing to the door. <sighs> Goodbye, Gandalf. Goodbye for the present, Bilbo. Take care of yourself. You are old enough, and perhaps wise enough. Take care. I don't care. Don't you worry about me. I'm as happy now as I have ever been, and that is saying a great deal. But the time has come. I'm being swept off my feet at last, he added, and then in a low voice, as if to himself, he sang softly in the dark. The road goes ever on and on Down from the door where it began Now far ahead the road has gone And I must follow if I can Pursuing it with eager feet Until it joins some larger way Where many paths and errands meet And whither then I cannot say he paused, silent for a moment. Then, without another word, he turned away from the lights and voices in the fields and tents, and followed by his three companions, went round into his garden, and trotted down the long sloping path. He jumped over a low place in the hedge at the bottom, and took to the meadows, passing into the night like a rustle of wind in the grass. Gandalf remained for a while staring after him into the darkness, Goodbye, my dear Bilbo. Until our next meeting, he said softly and went back indoors.